Good morning, my Tubies, my TikTokers, and my Twitters. It's Sheila True Love this fine uh, November 28th, Monday morning. It's going to be a great Monday morning. A Monday, a complete Monday. It's going to be wonderful. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's what time? 12.52 a.m. And you know how I do. If I can't sleep, I will get up and do something productive. Today I want us to focus on focus on things that are positive and I'm 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 speaking from Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 where it says brothers and sisters continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected but you notice here, it also tells us to focus on things that are true. And sometimes the truth is not always positive. However, we should work on focusing on things that are good and worthy of praise. So, there's this uh, philosopher, Robert Scheller. And he said, the good news is that the bad news can be turned into good news when you change your attitude and you change your way of thinking. And if you can't muster up a good attitude concerning something you're unhappy about, you can at least try to downplay the negative. If you will make a decision to say as little as possible about your problems and your disappointments in life, they won't dominate your thoughts or your mood. Talk as much as possible about your blessings and your hopeful expectations, and you'll notice how it would help to increase your joy. Be sure each day to fill your words or to fuel yourself with words of joy, not anger, depression, bitterness, or fear. Talk yourself into a better mood. Sometimes you just have to, you know, like they say, uh, you have to uh, pretend I forget the, 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 the exact way of saying it. Fake it till you make it. There you go. Yeah, you have to talk yourself into a better mood. Pretend like you're in a great mood. Act happy and fake it until you make it. And find something positive to say in every situation. Try to find something positive in every situation that you can say, which will help to lift your mood. Your thoughts and your words should be focused on positive and hopeful things, my darlings. There's always something positive in every situation. Like I said in one of my previous videos, when I wake up in the morning, I have an amazing uh, uh, gratitude, which helps me not to have a bad attitude. I woke up this morning, I can hear, I can see, I can walk. I can I can I can taste things, you know. I'm in pretty pretty much good health. I mean, I'm not in perfect perfect help health, you know. I have my issues or my challenges. At the same time, I focus on all the wonderful things that I do have. Just like you may have some parts of your body that have ailments, like I have a touch of arthritis in my left shoulder and my knee hurts, and you know how it is as you. As we make, as we become more and more refined and as we become more and more seasoned, you know, you get these ailments, but I think about all the wonderful things, all the parts of my body that are functioning perfectly, all the parts of my body that are not ailing or aching, you know? So I think about those things instead of sitting around thinking about, oh my God, this hurts and that, no, oh, man, please, who got time for all this? Ain't nobody got time for all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's always something positive that you can take from whatever situation you're in. And don't forget, please, there's a reason why Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. You get that? He's our Savior. He saved us by dying for us. So that gives us a second chance that Adam and Eve lost for us. He also saves us in many situations we may find ourselves in. 
you'll be surprised. Jesus Christ has come through for me so many times. I, you know, I've, I've lost count. At the same time, I pray. How many times a day do I pray? To be honest with you, Tubies, I can't even tell you. I pray all throughout my day. I'm talking to my heavenly father, Jehovah, Yahweh, all the time. And after I pray, I always talk to Jesus Christ, Christ all throughout my day. Jesus Christ is my best friend. I take him everywhere I go. Whenever I have to make decisions, I ask myself, what would Jesus Christ want me to do in this situation? I don't ask myself, what would he do? Because he was perfect. Of course, not totally uh in the absolute sense, perfect, because he still had the option to choose wrong. At the same time, he was perfect, you could say. So I always ask myself, what would Jesus want me to do? And considering I love him so much, I want to make him proud along with my heavenly father, Jehovah God. I love them so much. And you know how it is when you love someone deeply, you want to make them happy. You want to please them all the time. You don't want to do anything to break their heart or to hurt them. So you have to first develop a relationship with God and Christ. <clears throat> and you can do that through prayer, reading your Bible, reading spiritual literature, and do your own research. Please don't let anyone tell you not to look into things or not to do your own research when it comes to things. Like whatever topic or situation that you're in, Go on the internet, go on Google and type in the problem. And what does the scripture say about this? And do your own research. Before you do that, always go to Jehovah in prayer and pray for Holy Spirit to be activated inside of you so that you can see things clearly and allow the Holy Spirit to interpret things for you. That way you won't be, oops, new light. Oops, we made a mistake. No, let the Holy Spirit interpret it for you, darling. Anyway, we're going to do our Bible trivia questions. Yay! And you know what I do? I read a short story and you're going to exercise your listening skills. And here we go. I'm going to read it and then I'll ask you two questions and hopefully you will be able to answer it. We're on day six where Cain murders his brother. That's coming from Genesis chapter 3, verse 23, through chapter 4, verse 16. Adam and Eve lived outside the garden until they died. A flaming sword guards the path of the tree of life. No one has gone back there since they left. Eve gave birth to a baby boy named Cain. Her second baby boy was named Abel. When the boys became men, they worked like their father. Cain was a farmer. Abel was a shepherd. One day, Cain brought fruit to give God. He worked to grow the fruit on his farm. Abel had a gift for God too. He gave a lamb that had been born in the field. God was so happy with Abel's gift, but he refused to accept Cain's gift. Cain became angry. So God asked him, why are you angry? Be careful. Sin might catch you. Later, Cain killed his brother Abel while he was working in the field. God asked Cain, where is your brother? I don't know, Cain answered. Should I care for my brother? Am I my brother's keeper? What have you done? God said. Listen, Abel's blood is crying to me from the ground. You murdered Abel. You will always live under a curse. So Cain went away from God. He lived east of Eden in the land of Nod. Now, your first question. What did Cain do for work? Your second question. What was Abel's gift to God? You know, this <clears throat> is something that I always think about. You have two brothers that was raised in the same household, the same identical parents under the same circumstances and conditions. And yet you see how one child turned out to be ruthless and heartless and evil. And then you have the other child who turned out to be Christ-like, loving and kind and merciful. 
And then I think about Jacob and Esau in the same house. And we see how we had one who was appreciative and had so much gratitude and thankfulness. And then you had the other child. Now keep in mind, they're both raised in the same environment, the same household, same parents. And yet you see how one was so ungrateful. No gratitude, just a bad attitude, which is horrible. And you have a lot of adult children who are that way. And then they grow up and they want to blame their parent. But you can't blame your parents for everything, especially when you have siblings who some grew up to be very successful, Christ-like and amazing. And then you have another one who grew up to be heartless, soulless, uh, filled with meanness and hatred and resentment, it's ridiculous. You know, so I don't want parents to constantly keep beating themselves up. If you did wrong, ask for forgiveness, try to make amends and brush yourself off and keep it moving because you have some adult children who will never give you a break. They will never let you off the hook. But you keep in mind about also how Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, he was the best father, the best example for all of us, you know. And you think about how many angels fell away from the best parent. Now, that's the, no parent gets better than Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. And yet, and still, you see how so many angels fell away. And be, Satan became the devil. And then he had several of the other angels who chose to follow after Satan, the devil, and became his demons. So you can't say that God and Christ are not amazing parents. They are the best of parents. And still you see how wayward and unappreciative some children can be. So I don't want you to beat yourself up. I want you to do better. Of course, we are all trying to do better. I hope so. And keep in mind how much Jehovah loves you. And, and hold up. If God and Christ have forgiven you for your, 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 um, your sins or for your wrongdoing, or for your bad choices, or for your mistakes. If God and Christ have forgiven you, who the heck are these other people not to? So don't take that to heart. Don't beat yourself up. Just continue to do your best and to strive. Strive hard to try to do Jehovah God and Jesus Christ will. And everything will work out for you. I promise, keep your faith strong and always trust in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're going to have a great day today because Jehovah God, Jesus, and Sheila True Love truly love you very much. I'll see you tomorrow if God is willing. Bye-bye.